During the lockdown, I finally got the chance to play the famous worker placement Agricola online. Now, Agricola is known as a predecessor to Caverna, another game that came out later by the same designer. So when I finally started playing Agricola and I got to like the fifth play, I was like, okay, I understand. I understand why Caverna is bloated. In both of these farm-based games, you're placing workers down on spaces, which in turn lets you get seeds to sow into crops, animals to breed, and resources to build things. Now, Caverna is a big game that cost me a pretty penny. There's just so much in this box. The seven player boards that you'll probably never use all at the same time. Of course, we can't forget the wooden pieces that's famous for. There's wooden meeples for wood, animals, vegetables, grain, you name it. And of course, the insane amount of buildings that I just spent like 10 minutes setting up. Okay, so all this bloat is arguably overkill, but it doesn't really detract from the experience, except for one thing. These guys. The buildings. In Caverna, there's three different buildings you can buy. There's dwellings to house more dwarves, green furnishings for special abilities, and yellow furnishing to get food and points. Wait, 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 but here's a catch. There's a lot of these. Like, a lot. They're in a 6 by 8 grid, which means there's 48 different types. That's almost 50. Like, as long as you have the resources for any of them, you can buy them at any time. There's no prerequisites whatsoever. And all 48 of these are immediately available to buy at the beginning of the game. So you start the game and you have 48 different options to buy. That's... Oh my god, that's insane. So I printed out this reference guide on Board Game Geek, but I mean, come on, look at that. That's essentially a spreadsheet. And you need the spreadsheet, so if you're playing with multiple people, they're not all just craning their necks around the table to try to see what the hell they should buy next. See, since everything is available at the beginning of the game to everyone, there's a bajillion pass on what you can buy. Remember, it's not that it can't be played competitively and it doesn't have a high skill ceiling. Besides the dwellings, there's only one copy of each building, so if someone takes one that you want, that's a huge point swing. You always have perfect information on everyone's board and resources, so if you're flexible and take their buildings, you probably come out ahead. If you really wanted to, you could play this game dirty, fighting tooth and nail to maximize your victory points. When you're playing with multiple people who all have their own farms and are going for the same stack, and have different improvements on each farm? That's so much information, you don't want to pause the game for like 20 or 30 minutes because you just want the game to keep moving. Now when cutting down bloat in this game, I think Cole Werrell, the designer of Root, said it best in a BGG forum that you could just get rid of like two thirds of the buildings and it would probably be a lot better. Juve clearly didn't want to budge on the amount of buildings you get in the box so why not limit it by letting players draft a couple or maybe just taking a random amount from a bag. But one thing's for sure, there needs to be less during gameplay, because right now, there's so much available to you, there's no scarcity in supply. This makes Caverna feel more like an expensive sandbox where you just play around and buy whatever you want that overshadows a competitive depth that's definitely there, but just mostly untouched. It's like playing a farming simulator like Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley, and every time you go into town to get resources, your friends are all there. Lambs. They're there, but sometimes they buy something that you want, but yeah, it's all right. There's so much in the town that there's there's something for everyone and you'll come home with something decent. Agricola, the predecessor to Caverna, had always been heralded as the tighter yet more punishing game. And I never knew why until I played Agricola for 10 days straight. So while it might seem more tricky to win and get points because feeding your family is so hard, there's only 22 different options to build at a time. And 14 of those are in everyone's personal hand, which means that only they can look at and buy them meaning that you don't have to worry about counterplaying other people's hands and getting disrupted yourself here. Compare this to the 48 different options in Caverna, which is double. But if you just glance at the games, they're both rated pretty highly. But to show how much more love Agricola gets, the 2007 release of Agricola got revised in 2016, and Agricola is still being played competitively online. Caverna, on the other hand, was released in 2013, and I can't even find it to play competitively on that same website. And so, I have to say it again. Bloat kills competitiveness. Yes, in Caverna, the bloat in it kills the competitiveness. No one plays it online competitively. People do for Agricola. It's like the designer, Juve Rosenberg, saw after 2007 that Agricola was so wildly successful he wanted the game to be more accessible and probably make more money. So he's like, hmm, okay, okay. 
Uh, so let's just still make a farm theme, but let's make it like about dwarves instead. So let's call it Caverna. I'll put like a dwarf in the front. All right, cool, cool. Oh, you're telling me that John has to go to college? Okay, okay, I gotta, gotta change the game. Up to seven players, why not? Yeah, let's just add in seven player boards, enough components for all that. Oh, and uh, for the accessibility part, yeah, let's just put in 48 different buildings at the beginning. Yeah, because why not? We'll, we'll sell more cardboard and that way serious players can be like, oh my God, there's so many options, cool. And the casual players will be like, oh, well, there's so many options. So no matter what I do, my farm grows. Yay. Caverna, a very bloated game, but a very enjoyable group project that it usually ends up being nonetheless when I can get it to the table, that is, like, once every two years, once every three years. Thank you guys for tuning into Shelfside during this time of quarantine. Let us know if you have any suggestions. We do take suggestions. Maybe another game you want me to do, like another dive on. Maybe a comment about this video. Or just please subscribe. I mean, we really appreciate it. So just go ahead. There's, like, the little red thing there or there. I'm not sure what direction. Yeah, just press it. Press it now. Turn on the bell if you want. Bye-bye.